Hello Grace Family Online, we are so glad that you are joining us today and um, if you're watching for the first time, we just hope that you will enjoy this time together. My name is Michelle and I'm the online pastor here at Grace and joining me today is Ramon. Welcome Ramon. Thank you Michelle, it's so good to be with everyone today and welcome to all our new members who are possibly joining us for the first time or have, who have um, joined us over the past few weeks. It is great to have you with us. Now, as you may know, um, we are approaching the 2024 elections here in South Africa. And uh, we really, as a church, want to be intentional about praying for our country. And we want to encourage you to pray too. We know that God is ultimately the author of the story. And uh, together we want to pray for peace, we want to pray for guidance, we want to pray for protection over our nation. So wherever you may be in the world, we also want to recognize that you are possibly also facing elections in your nation, seeing as this year is kind of that super election year with over 50 nations having pivotal election years um, coming up. So we want to ask you, to join us as we join you to pray for these elections. Thanks, Ramon. So we are in a series called Empty and you don't want to miss the next few Sundays. Um, this week, Wayne will be speaking about failure. Um, remember to like and share this message with someone you know and who might need to be encouraged after you've watched. Enjoy. Overcome with despair and overwhelmed by his sin, Peter returns home to what he knows best. If only he had trusted more. If only he had stood up for what he thought he believed. If only he hadn't denied knowing Jesus. Would anything have been different? Leaving behind his friends and his faith, Peter sits sullen in the pain of failure. If only he hadn't been so afraid. I'm going out to fish. Uh, these were the words by Peter to his friends after Jesus' death. Uh, and they were full of meaning, they were full of history, and full of emotion. Uh, Peter had failed. You know. In fact, I sense as Peter reflected on his life and his relationship with Jesus, his friend now dead, he had not just failed, he was a failure. He had failed when Jesus invited him to walk on water in the middle of a storm. Uh, he stepped out of the boat, took a risk, got out of the boat, and he sank. You know? He had recognized Jesus as the Messiah, but he had failed to see what Jesus had come to do, and, 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 and he was rebuked by Jesus himself. Get behind me, Satan. That's a pretty, hey, Peter, you've got it all wrong. These were Jesus' words when Peter said that he, Peter, would not allow bad things to happen to Jesus. He had failed to protect Jesus at his arrest. He tried. He cut off the ear of one of his arresters, and that was wrong. Jesus just simply put the guy's ear back. That's called an epic fail. You know, you just read the room wrong. Three times when asked whether he knew Jesus, afraid for his life and who could blame him, he declared that he never knew Jesus. He never knew him. He had failed his friend in his deepest and darkest hour, and he had failed. In fact, he was a failure. I'm going to fish. And that was a declaration. I'm done. I'm done risking and trying to be brave. I'm going to play it safe. I'm going to do what I know what to do, which is fish. And Peter was a fisherman. I'm going to do what I know I won't fail in, fish. I'm going fishing. This following Jesus, learning from the rabbi, uh, 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 this, this thing, I'm not good enough. I am done. On a matter trivial by comparison, I physically got to my I am going fishing moment in the year 2000. While well, it was the year 2000, I was at the top of my physical prowess. Can you imagine? 35 years old. That's, that's peak stuff. I was fit as you could find. I couldn't fish, but I was a runner. 10 kilometers, 20 kilometers, 30 kilometers. I could do at a decent pace on any morning. I announced to all uh, who would listen, I was going to run the greatest race of all, the Comrades Marathon. 
I trained with great friends. I qualified for the race. I headed for the start with about 18,000 kilometers of running in my legs. Uh, and that between January and May. I had the prayers of the community behind me. And now with the sound of the cock crowing at the start of the race and the ringing out of chariots of fire that kind of got my blood going, I set off. What could go wrong? This was a very public thing. Everybody knew. Uh, nothing better go wrong. That was what was in my heart. And it hadn't entered my mind that I would not succeed. I was a runner after all. At about 50 kilometers, things didn't feel good at all. I knew I was in trouble when I looked left and next to me was a slightly overweight 65-year-old woman smiling as she passed me. Someone's granny was passing me. I knew I was in greater trouble when a man with one leg and a piece of perspex came running past me, smiling. Good morning, he said. At about the 70 kilometer mark, I was on my knees buying a small farm on the side of the road. I was done. I'm done. You know, the next year I did it again. I got to a similar distance in the race and bought a similar farm and I declared I am done. Going up and coming down, I was a failure. I am done. There was a lot of very helpful advice. I could see the pity in the eyes of the advisors as I felt the shame, you know. It's all in the mind, some said. That was very helpful to me. In others, they're saying you have a weak mind. Uh, failure is simple, and these are great people. Failure is simply the opportunity to begin, begin again, uh, this time more intelligently. This is from Henry Ford. Success is not final. Uh, failure is not fatal. It's the courage to continue that counts, which had me feeling less courageous. You've not failed. Uh, you've just found 10,000 ways that won't work, says Thomas Edison. The, the greatest glory in living, uh, in living lies not in never failing, but in rising every time we fail, our great Nelson Mandela. Uh, well, this just left me feeling better, didn't it? Because I did not rise. Failure should be our teacher, not our undertaker. Failure is a delay, not a defeat. It is a temporary detour, not a dead end. Dennis Waitley. This one would run true. Success is stumbling from failure to failure with no loss of enthusiasm. Uh, Winston Churchill. Uh, and lastly, there's no failure except no longer trying. I was done. All these things about failure are just deeply true. We sense them, but not helpful to me at the time. And I wonder if you have an I am going fishing moment, an I'm done moment, a moment far more significant than a road race. I, I'm going fishing. I'm, I'm done risking. I'm done being brave. I, I'm done loving again. I'm done risking a relationship again. I'm done putting myself out there again. I'm done trying things beyond myself. I'm done risking failure. I'm going to play it safe. I am done. I, with Peter, am going fishing. And when we get to that place, the question I have for us today is how do we rise strong? How do we rise strong? And here's what happens for Peter at this place. And I'm going to read from John chapter 21. Uh, John, the disciple Jesus loved, he refers to himself in this passage, and uh, he's Peter's friend. Peter says, I'm going out to fish. And they said, his friends, we'll go with you. So they went out into the boat, but that night... <laughs> Wound upon wound, they caught nothing. Peter was a, was a fisherman, and that night he failed too. They caught nothing. I'm going to do what I know I can do, said Peter. And all night, all through the night, they catch not one fish. They failed at what he thought he was safe at, at what he knew best. And that could only touch the heart. But what happens next is profound. Early in the morning, Jesus stood on the shore. This is the risen Christ. But the disciples did not realize that it was Jesus. He called out to them, friends, have you any fish? 
<laughs> no, no, they answered. The other gospels are a little more verbal about that. And he said, throw your net on the right side of the boat and you will find some. And when they did, they were unable to haul the net in because of the large number of fish. Try something new, says Jesus. Try again. Risk again. Throw your net on the other side. Uh, and John says to Peter, it's Jesus. And Peter jumps out of the boat and he swims to the shore. And when the boat arrives, they see a fire. And I just love that. This is the risen Christ who's made a fire. And on the fire is some fish. And it's not the fish they caught because they were still bringing it in. Uh, and there was some bread. And Jesus says, come and have some breakfast. What happens around that fire sets the scene for us to all get up from our I am done place. Uh, it sets the scene for us to risk again, to be brave again, to live again. It sets the scene for us to rise strong. And, and uh, I want to invite you around the fire. You see, we may mitigate the risk of failure to the point that we are no longer brave. So we implode our lives. So that we don't fail because we fear failure and then we are no longer brave. But if we are brave enough, for often enough, we are bound to fail. And Peter had been brave. I admire this man. He was the one out the boat close enough to be identified as a follower of Jesus. Close enough to deny him. But the brave had been knocked out of him and he said, I'm going fishing. Then there's the fire. Then there's the fish. And this is what happened. Let me read. When they, when they had finished eating, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of John, do you love me more than these? Yes, Lord, he said. You know that I love you. Perhaps Jesus was pointing to the fishing nets and the boat. I love you more than this fishing stuff. Jesus said, feed my lambs. Again, Jesus said, Simon, son of John. And I love the way that, that uh, uh, Jesus connects him to his history, to his, to his birth, to, to his father. Simon, son of John, do you love me? And he answered, yes, Lord, you, you know that I love you. And Jesus said, take care of my sheep. The third time he said to him, Simon, son of John, and I don't think these were just one after the other. It's a little later, during breakfast. Do you love me? Now Peter's hurt because Jesus asked him, the third time, do you love me? He said, Lord, you know all things. You know that I love you. And Jesus said to him, feed my sheep. Jesus, the one denied three times by Peter. Jesus, the one hurt by the actions of Peter, his friend. I want you to notice, gives no lecture, no passive aggression, no cold shoulder, no glib one-liners on failure. Jesus doesn't play the victim uh, but in essence says to John, I love you. When he asked John, do you love me? It assumes the love of Jesus for John, for Peter rather. Your failure doesn't change that, Peter. Do you love me? He asks, check your heart. In a sense, that question says, Peter, check your heart. Uh, process your feelings with self-compassion and with love. Check your heart. And then the last, feed my sheep, I trust you. You are trustworthy. You are worthy. Your failure doesn't change that. And, and, and that is just a beautiful scene for us. This gives Peter and us the space to rise strong. Peter so loved. Peter in answering the question, do you love me? Squaring away his own heart. Peter so trusted and, and considered worthy, rises bravely and strongly from his failure and contributes to the healing of the world by God's power. So let me invite you around the fire. In Brené Brown's book, Rising Strong, she introduces a transformative process for navigating failure and adversity. And it's called the reckoning, the rumble, and the revolution. And my sense is that when Peter is answering the question from Jesus, that middle question, uh, uh, Simon, son of John, do you love me? He's doing this work. He's reckoning, he's rumbling, and he's revolutionizing. That's what's happening in his heart. Uh, and he can do that work. And my sense is you can only do that work, knowing that you are loved and knowing that you are trusted. Otherwise, you're going to hide, blame, uh, uh, and, and, and implode into a safe life. 
So these steps provide the framework for rising strong after experiencing setback, disappointment, or failure. So let's dive in, shall we? You are loved and you are trusted, right? Now let's get into the reckoning. Uh, this step involves recognizing and acknowledging the emotions and the stories that arise in us in response to failure. It's about bravely facing the truth about what happened and taking ownership of our feelings and experiences. So instead of denying or avoiding our emotions, the reckoning encourages us to confront them head on. You know, do you love me? That's a big question. By acknowledging our vulnerability and being honest with ourselves, we lay the foundation for growth and the development of this beautiful thing our world requires of us, which is resilience. Now, while we're doing that, the encouragement is practice self-compassion. So instead of being overly self-critical, show yourself kindness and understanding and take yourself a little lightly. Understand that failure is a natural part of life and doesn't diminish your worth as a person and embrace your vulnerability. So practice compassion and be a little vulnerable. I hate being vulnerable, but be a little vulnerable. You see, being vulnerable means being open to experiencing failure without letting it define you. As you embrace vulnerability, it allows you to take risks and pursue opportunities even if there's a chance of failure. You see, the irony is that we attempt to disown our difficult stories to appear more whole and together, or more acceptable. But our wholeness actually depends on the integration of all our experiences, which includes the fails. So write your fail stories down, how you felt. It's liberating. You know, I failed as a father. You know, you dad for 33 years, dad of two children, daughters. There was an occasion I had renewed one of their cell phones, and I won't even tell you which one, uh, one afternoon, and they were off to the village to celebrate a milestone in their lives. I think it was a, a completion of a degree or something. And, and I forgot, I even now forget what it was. Now, her cell phone freshly renewed, so there's a two-year payment plan on this thing, um, uh, was stolen. Thieves stole her cell phone, and they came to the village to steal, steal people's phones. So my words to her when she phoned brokenhearted from a friend's phone was, come home now, you have nothing to celebrate. <laughs> uh, epic fail, actually. You see, my stuff, my financial vulnerabilities, my insecurities, got in the way of compassion for one I deeply loved when she needed me most. I held that line for far too long, and in the middle of the night, when my phone pinged with a text message, your phone has been found, you know, iPhones can be found. Uh, I clicked the link, I woke her up, I entered her Apple ID, only to discover that the thieves had sent the text, and I had followed that link, and now I had given them her Apple ID, so the phone had been stolen twice, one on her watch and one on mine. <laughs> fail upon fail, you know. Now, what do I say about that? Wayne, you have nothing to celebrate. Now, today the family laughs with me about this moment. They, they enact this scene out as I try to work out how the thief stole her phone. And I'm often told, Dad, you've got nothing to celebrate. And they do so with love and with compassion. Uh, we, we reckon. To reckon with failure, with vulnerability and self-compassion, it helps us to rise strong. So it's the reckoning and then the rumble. And once we've reckoned with our emotions and our stories, the next step is to engage in the rumble. And, and, and it is what it sounds like it is. Yeah, we ask some tough questions. So why did I feel the way I felt? How can I learn and how can I grow in this failure? Peter must have been asking, what led me to, to be in that courtyard and then to deny Jesus? You know, the rumble is not about finding quick fixes or answers. It's about learning, leaning into the discomfort and the uncertainty and uncover deep truths. In a way, the rumble is learning from our mistakes. View failure as an opportunity for growth and learning rather than an end to our lives and our risking. So we take the time to reflect on what went wrong, what we did and can do differently in the future. 
You see, failure provides us with valuable insights that lead to improvement and success. While we rumble, we cultivate resilience in a way. And you build your resilience by a positive mindset. And I think that's what Jesus does for Peter and for us. Uh, Jesus sets the scene where we can say, I am loved. I am worthy. I can get better. I can do better. I can rise strong. This is the building of resilience with a positive mindset. Let me remind you what Dennis Waitley said. Failure should be our teacher, not our undertaker. Failure is the delay, not a defeat. It is temp a temporary detour, not a dead end. It is not the end. So when we rumble, we get better and it gets better for those around us. So rumble, people, as, uh, so that you can rise strong. And then lastly, of course, there's the revolution. The revolution happens when we integrate what we've learned from the reckoning and the rumble into meaningful change and action. So uh, it doesn't just stop with, oh, we've named our feelings and, oh, we've wrestled it down to the ground. Um, it converts into the way we live. It's a beautiful thing. We rise strong. We are loved and we are worthy and we can grow and we can change. <laughs> And this is where we use our, our newfound insights to transform ourselves and our lives. So we set new goals. Wayne, you can, do a be you, can, uh, uh, you, you can be a better father. Wayne, you can run five kilometers, but don't try 90. <laughs> we set new goals. We create new priorities. We establish healthier boundaries. We make different choices and we harness the power of vulnerability and resilience and we grow. We change. We rise. We get better and we rise strong. Remember Henry Ford. I quoted it earlier. It wasn't helpful in the beginning. It's helpful now. Failure is simply the opportunity to begin again, this time more intelligently. So when we, uh, when we engage in the revolution, we're saying we're getting wiser, we're getting cleverer, we're getting more intelligent because we're learning from our failure and we're learning from our feelings. So rising strong will ask you to be brave as you as you uh, rumble and as you wrestle these things to the ground. And Brené Brown says, you can choose courage or you can choose comfort, but you cannot choose both. So uh, here's my prayer, my prayer of encouragement to you today. In your place of failure, in your I'm done, in I'm going fishing, those going fishing moments. And some of you might be right there today. Some of you may be remember it long ago and it still has an impact on you. And so you can still uh, work with it. You are loved. Know this truth. You are worthy. It was an experience of Peter who had failed so dismally uh, around a fish bry. You are loved and you are worthy. This is an eternal truth. So now reckon, rumble, and revolutionize your life with great courage. Rise strong and, uh, and live brave and bold and, and courageously into the rest of your life. Don't settle for the safe, but rise strong. Let me pray with you. Lord, may we find ourselves around a fire with you. You say to your friends, come. Let's have breakfast. And in your presence, Jesus, as fathers, as mothers, husbands and wives, as brothers and sisters, as employers and employees, as people, flesh and blood, living out courageously in the world, help us, Lord, to rise strong. Meet us in our place of deepest failure. Give us the space to uh, uh, to be able to name and acknowledge and process all that has happened and give us the faith to see that you invite us up. You invite us to rise. You invite us to get up. You invite us to courage. You invite us to try again. You invite us to, 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 to love again. You invite us to start that business again. You invite us to, to, to be courageous. And may we sense as we rise strong with you today, Jesus, that you're with us, out ahead of us, and have always been behind us. 
I pray for every person listening today. May each of us sense a new boldness and courage in us in the presence of our failure. Amen. God bless you all and have a great week. What an incredible message, wasn't that, Michelle? Oh, beautiful. Yeah. Thank you, Wayne, for just reminding us that just like Peter, we fail. And Jesus says to us that we are loved, trusted and worthy. And because of this, we get to rise strong again. And that yeah. is just such a beautiful message for us this week. Absolutely. Absolutely. And as part of our worship, we come to this time when we give with loving and generous hearts because of God's abundant, never failing love. And we understand that the purpose of our, our giving in this moment within giving is not to fund the mission of the church, but ultimately for us as God's people to encounter Him through that moment of generosity. Absolutely. So you can give by Zappa or PayPal uh, if you are outside of the borders of South Africa. But what I really want to say is to those of you who have shown generosity through this channel, we just so, so grateful and want to thank you thank so you. much. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. So let's worship together um, in song. And it's a beautiful song. And as we um, worship, we also give as part of our worship. And may you remember that wherever you are in the world, that God is very present through His Holy Spirit. And that you are not defined by your failures, but by your identity in Jesus Christ.
Wow, Peter's fear is so relatable and I just love this song because it just reminds us to continue to pray and seek and worship God. Um, because you know, we know that this is the only prescription for our fears and failures. And um, so today, I don't know if you feel like you're drowning in oceans deep or just keeping your head above water, but wherever you are, we would love to hold you in prayer. So email me, michelle at grace.org.za and I will hold you in prayer and I'll reply to your email so we can just keep the connection strong. Absolutely. So let's pray together knowing that Jesus, our Savior, is waiting to listen to our prayers, to answer, to save us from deep waters, and to love us right where we are as we hear His words saying, take courage, it's me. Don't be afraid. Amen. Amen. Goodbye and have a beautiful day, everyone.